Hey, thanks for stopping by the Watercolor Methods YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe so you'll find out when we've got something new posted for you to watch. And maybe check out our website, watercolormethods.com, where we've got over 200 full-length, in-depth watercolor lessons and tutorials that you might like. In the meantime, let's take a look at this lesson. This quick tutorial is about two other important basic watercolor painting techniques uh, that you'll use in most of your paintings, but they won't be really the majority of the work that you do. Uh, those two techniques are the dry brush and the lift technique. Again, they're both useful for doing mostly things that have to do with adding a textural quality to certain portions of the painting. Now I've got two little scenes that are partially done already that we're going to work on to demonstrate these techniques. Both of these already have some color on. It's already dry uh, and I wanted to show you this to start because we're going to start out actually with the lift technique and showing how you can use that in an area that's already dry. And in fact, if you look at that line of trees back in the back background on this simple little landscape here, you can see that uh, they look like fall trees. They've got fall color on them. Dark, it's darker underneath the canopies of the trees as it often is. And there are a few places right here, especially, where a br brush with clear water was used to lift gently some color to create what looks like the trunks of trees that we can barely see, but these lighter vertical marks that sort of look like the trunks of trees. And just to show you that technique again, I'm going to do the exact same thing. So I've got clear water on the brush. This is an angled flat. I like these for this technique because I get a nice sharp point up here that I can work with. And it's a nylon brush, not a natural hair, but a nylon brush because uh, nylon brushes tend to be a little bit stiffer and makes it easier to do this technique. So I'm going to just add another trunk right here. And I'll do that by, you can see, scrubbing the corner of that brush a little bit. And it picks up another little area out of the dark color that's under the canopy, it's lifted some of that color out, created another sort of vertical mark, which could be the trunk of another tree. And same thing over here, again, just a little bit of it. That one's not as prominent. Maybe one over here. And again, real easy, clear water on the brush, use the corner of a flat. This one's an angled flat, but it can be a regular flat. Small brush is actually better. And it allows you to, again, to lift those little bits of color out of that dark area, creating a highlight, and in this case, these vertical marks that look like they could be the trunks of trees back in those woods. So that's one way to use a lift. We're going to use the lift again later in this little scene as well as in this scene, which is actually a big lake. Uh, with reflections. And I'll show you how in both of these how we can use lifts actually to show highlights on the trunk of the tree and to lift out, there's a puddle of water right here which we haven't painted in yet, but lift out some ripples or a line that creates or indicates some movement on the surface of the water and interrupts the reflection that's going to be in there. Before we get to that we can go on to the dry brush technique. Now the dry brush technique is actually going to be used probably more than your lift technique because the lift technique is done for relatively small areas and relatively very specific kinds of solutions. The dry brush technique is actually uh, just what it sounds like. It's a dry brush, meaning it's a brush that doesn't have a lot of water in it but does have a lot of color on it, and then it's used essentially to drag across the textural surface of watercolor paper, cold press or rough especially, to get a rough edged mark. You can al already see some of that 
on the tops of these trees. This is essentially dry brush work, right? Along the tops of the trees. It creates a rough looking texture, uh, texture where there's uh, some paint lays down other areas where the texture of or the surface of the paper has dropped in is lower and in those areas because the brush is fairly dry and there's no water really to drop in there into those lower parts of the texture of the paper the brush just rides along the surface and creates that textural mark and it's really good for uh, these rough edges are good for many things but uh, they're really good for showing things like rough bark on trees which we'll do here some sparkle on the surface of water like a puddle like this or the surface of a lake which we'll do in a little bit some shimmering light maybe coming through a cast shadow we're going to do that in this little scene up here and it can also be done in places like this you notice that there's some dark color here there's none over there and I left that there on purpose because I'm going to go back to my palette pick up some more of that darker color which is uh, mostly ultramarine blue and burnt sienna mixed together. I'm going to get that on the brush and I'm going to use actually the side of the brush. This is a nice pointy round and if I use the side of the brush and I use it lightly I can use it with a little bit more water than you'd expect and I can still get that rough those rough marks that I really want under the under the canopy of those trees back in the back. So that's one way to use it. And that is actually not as much a dry brush is, as it is a technique with a wetter brush. So let's go on and do a little bit more of that. So the dry brush technique, again, you can do it with a really dry brush, meaning a brush with a very little bit of color on it. Or you can do it actually with a wet brush and a fairly wet wash if you use the brush correctly. And again, we're going to do both. The first thing we're going to do is actually the dry brush look or try to get that look with a wet brush. And I'm going to do it specifically back here where there's a cast shadow behind this tree. Which, by the way, you can see some of that work already done. You can see where there's some white paper showing through here. A little bit of shimmer. This is going to get covered up. But a little bit of shimmer kind of on the ground as if there's some highlights from the sun is creating a little bit of highlight on the grasses in that field. And this was done actually with a wet brush and we're going to do it again now to get that cast shadow. So I'm going to pick up sort of a greenish gray color off of my palette which will serve as the dark kind of green, grayish green cast shadow from this the trunk of this tree. Now I'm careful to place my point where the shadow starts, particularly on the near side of a tree like that. I'm pretty careful to place that. So I'm using the point of the brush. But notice that I'm using these quick light strokes to pull that cast shadow back away from the tree. And then again, that leaves some shimmer in there, a little bit of sparkle. Instead of having this solid color, this solid dark of the shadow. I get a little bit of shimmer back further. This tree looks like it doesn't have any leaves on it, but if it does, those leaves are probably letting, in the fall especially, is letting some light through because the canopy is not as full as it would be in the summer. And this technique, again, with a wet brush but a light stroke, works really well to get that sort of look. And again, there's a shimmer right in there, maybe a little too much, but I'll cover some of that. And there's our cast shadow from the tree. I'm going to do the same thing really with, this time, a, a gray color for the trunk and the bark that's on the trunk of the tree. And again, this is a pretty wet brush. So I'll start putting in my strokes of paint. I'm going to make these vertical because that tree is vertical. And you can see light, quick strokes. And it allows me to leave some white paper showing which simulates rough bark. Areas of highlight where there's, there's some light hitting. I can do that up here on the this branch especially which has probably got some cast shadow on it. 
And again, light, quick strokes will do that for you with a wet brush. Now, if you want to do the actual dry brush technique, it's the same thing, but you use really thick paint right out of the wells. You can get that on the brush. That's what I have here. This is a rigger, so I don't know if you have a rigger. Uh, not everybody does, but it's a very small round, essentially, with very long bristles on it. If you don't have that, you can actually use a small round. I'll show you one of those in a second. But the next thing you do is blot that brush really well. Get the water out of it while leaving the paint on the bristles. And then I like to pull my brush so that it's almost horizontal. And that allows me to get a really rough mark. You can see right there along the edge of this line where the light is catching the tree on this side and then changing to shade on that side. I get, get some of that rough dry brush. This is really dry brush work here. Again, paint on the brush. I blot it right at the ferrule that pulls the water out of the brush, makes it a really, really dry brush. And again, I can do that again. Really rough here. I'm going to maybe get some of that rough texture up on this branch that's coming off as well. Really good technique for things like, again, rough bark on a tree, almost any element in your painting that's got some rougher texture to it, that dry brush technique will work really, really well. And again, if you don't have a rigger, you can use a really small round to do the same thing. So there's two ways to use that dry brush. I noticed that I pulled my dry brush mark a little bit too far here, so now I'm doing a lift. This is another use for that lift. Clear water on the brush, move it around a little bit, see if I can pick that color up. So we've taken a look at one way to use the lift technique in a dried passage, like a darker passage back here in the background. Some dry brush sort of work here with really a wet brush, but dry brush technique by essentially using the tip lightly back there on the surface of the paper. We've done the same thing over here on the left side of this tree, the shady side. We used a wet brush, but with light strokes along using, and uh, I say using, touching only really the tip of the brush on the paper. And that gives us a little bit of that dry brush look within a wet wash. And then we used our rigger, this very thin brush, this time very dry, to make these rough edge marks right here along uh, the edge where we're changing from light to shade on the trunk of the tree. One really good way to use this technique, this dry brush technique, is for things like weeds and grasses. We tend to want to paint those sort of separately, don't we? We, uh, we tend to overdo it a lot. We paint them one by one. But with, again, this rigger, or I'll do it even with my small round, I've got very dry paint on those brushes. can make these quick marks, again, with the tip of the brush, and it gives me some really quick, easy weeds. And with a rigger, these really long bristles in the side of the brush, I can even lay that down and get a whole bunch of weeds in at the same time. This is, again, a really great technique to get used to, to practice, and allow this medium and these techniques to really work for you in your painting and make that painting a little bit easier and honestly not quite so fussy looking the way we tend to want to do with a lot of paint on our brush and uh, this tendency to want to paint every weed, every last little weed. We're, this technique allows us really to let the medium do a lot of the work for us. And we get a great effect without a lot of trouble and, and frankly without a lot of fuss. All right, so let's go down here into the puddle. The puddle is also going to be done uh, with really some dry brush work. Now, we're going to do dry brush work with a wet brush first, and then we'll go back with some dry brush marks later with actually a dry brush. Now the puddle is going to be reflecting some sky color, so I'm going to get some blue in here first. And again, I'm going to use a wet brush uh, 
on its side to get a dry brush effect in that wet wash. And then we'll do some dry brush work and we'll also do a lift out of that color that I put in. So let me get some of that sky color off my palette. And again, this brush is wet. I've not dried it, but I am using it on its side and lightly. And I'm letting the bristles just skim over the surface of the paper. I'm trying to get some of the reflected color from the sky in the puddle and leaving behind some kind of light highlights that show a little bit of shimmering light. Uh, you've seen that, I'm sure, on puddles and on the surfaces, surfaces of streams and lakes where water, or, I'm sorry, light seems to shimmer across the water, leaving those very small specks of light, which are hard to paint in watercolor. Uh, if you're trying to paint every little thing with the, with the tip of the brush, this technique works really, really well. And it allows you, if you need to, to fill in. For instance, there's probably a little bit too much light showing there, too much shimmer there. So I get a nice effect from that. And then my tree is dark gray, so I'm going to go back to the palette and pick up this dark gray color. Now this is actually dry and wet technique. So I've got really thick paint on my brush that gray that I used for the tree itself. Like I did on the dry brush technique just a few minutes ago, I'm going to dry this brush at the ferrule, pulling most of the water out but leaving the color in, and I'm going to make these vertical strokes right here, especially where I'm seeing the gray, maybe a horizontal stroke or two, so that I'm seeing the reflection of that tree just, just barely. But I'm seeing the reflection of that tree in that puddle right there. Could even bring some down here. Now I'm using the tip, can use the side, and I painted it right into that wet, those wet strokes of paint. Where there's wet paint, the gray is mixing and mingling. Where there's none, for instance right here where there's some sparkle, the gray paint mixes around it but it leaves the sparkle behind. Again, a really great technique for showing water and for showing reflections in water. Now to lift out of that, oftentimes reflections are interrupted. Now we already have some sparkle here that's interrupting our reflection, but if I get my flat out, again this flat brush I used a little bit earlier, blot it really well. I, I cleaned it out in the clear water. I'm blotting it now. I'm trying to make sure I've got a nice flat edge. I can go in and pick up some color. So I'm going to do a lift right here. Again, as if there's a ripple in the water. That's interrupting that reflection. Do a little bit over here as well. It's really great technique. The puddle's not a big body of water, so we don't get quite the same effect when we do our lake scene in just a minute. You'll see it better in that one. And then the last thing we can do is get a little bit more of our rough texture back here in the shady part of the trunk of the tree back in here. And it's the same thing. I'm going to use my rigger. And if you don't have the rigger, you can use the small round. In fact, I'll do both. I like to lay the brush on the side. And again, make vertical marks because the trunk of the tree is vertical. The bark is really running vertically rather than horizontally. You can do some of that on the bottom of that branch. Maybe pull it off the page here. Maybe even a couple more strokes down there on the lit side. Again, just to get some more texture on that tree. Blend it in if you need to a little bit. But there you have it. Great ways to use both the lift and the dry brush technique. And again, the lift can be done out of a dry passage or out of a wet passage. We did both in this little exercise. And then the dry brush technique, again, can be done with a wet brush, but with a particular way of holding the brush, essentially laying it on its side and lightly letting it ride across the texture of the paper. And this will work very well on cold press.
and rough paper. It won't work very well on hot press paper because it's too smooth. But you can do that and get a nice effect the way we got in this puddle down here. You can also use a real dry brush. That is a brush that has a lot of paint but very little water on it to get some of the dry brush marks like we did here on the lit side of that tree. We also use that technique to get weeds, kind of sparse looking weeds, and again, where they're, they're broken up like that, it just looks like a little bit of sparkle, lights hitting, and maybe there's some little reflections coming off of the weeds in those areas. But we get a really good effect really quickly and easily by doing that technique there. So let's go on now to our lake scene just to show you a couple other ways to use these techniques. Once again, you can see I've already done the lift technique in a dry passage right here. I painted in the distant land and then I had painted through where I marked in the trunks of these pine trees that are sitting here on uh, this little piece of land that sticks out here in the middle ground. I lifted those out. I, I used my flat brush and I just lifted out those marks so that I could see again the trunks of those pine trees. So let's take a look at another way to use this dry into wet technique with a wet brush. So in our sky we can simulate the look of sort of wispy clouds up in the sky again with a wet brush but using the side of the brush and allowing the wet wash to flow in. I'm going to try not to paint over my trees too much. But at the same time, the brush is riding over the texture of the paper, leaving white areas behind. And maybe too much, a little too much of the white area, but uh, we can remedy that by filling in later. Since this is really wet, really a wet wash, a wet into wet wash, think about it like that. I want to leave behind some indications of these wispy little clouds. And if when I'm done with my wash, it looks like there's a bit too much of that, I just go back with the tip of the brush and then carefully fill in areas where maybe there's too much white showing. Kind of fill in, narrow down the number and amount of clouds that are out there. And it's a great way to get a good looking sky with some activity and movement in it, again, without too much effort. We, we often spend a lot of time trying to really get all those clouds in there and being sure about every edge. And this technique, again, is really, really good for that. It's dry brush technique, really, with a wet brush. And again, the important things about that are wet wash on the brush but use the brush on its side and use it lightly and let the brush just glide over the texture of the paper. We're going to use that same technique back in here on the surface of our water. And this time we've got a lot of water. It starts back here and it works all the way down to the bottom edge of the picture. So we've got a lot of area to cover. And as I've mentioned before, water tends to reflect, uh, to a large degree, the color of the sky. So I've got sky color more or less on my brush. And a little bit of the color from back in there, back in that distant piece of land. And I'm doing the same technique. And I'm trying to get some shimmer on the water. Again, it's an effect we've all seen. If you spend any time near the water at all, lakes, oceans, streams, even puddles, you'll see this. Now I've turned my brush, so I'm really using the point, but I'm using it very lightly. And again, this is a wet brush, not a dry brush. Notice that I'm making, being very careful to make horizontal marks. Keep that surface of the water very flat by using these horizontal marks. And it got, again, it's a very simple technique. It's easy to do, it does take a little bit of practice, but it's easy to do and it's simple 
and you get a really, really great effect. And again, when you're working with a wet wash on the brush, wet, essentially a wet brush with light touches to get this dry brush look, you can go back and fill in. So if there's too much white showing, and I think I've got too much showing, I can go back and fill in, get some of that shimmer off of there, take some of it away. change the color if I need to. And then I haven't done all the trees yet. We're going to do those in a minute again with some dry brush technique, but I do have these in and I know I'm going to have some over here. So I can go get some of that dark green color, this time pretty thick. When I say thick, I'm going to be doing more of a dry brush technique on this. And I want to get those reflections in. Now there's some trunk here and then the reflections would probably start here. And I'm mingling them right in, that color right into the blue that I've already put down on the surface of the water. I'm letting it mingle in. It's wet color, but I'm going to get the dry brush effect essentially because I'm letting that wet green color mingle into the wet areas I've already uh, placed with my wet brush, dry brush technique. Again, a very simple way to get these nice reflections, to get the look of the horizontalness of the lake first, then let those reflections settle right onto that surface of the water that you've already gotten placed and it works really, really well. Okay, so I've got a nice sky with a little bit of cloud activity up there, a, sh a lake with a kind of shimmering surface that I did with the wet brush, dry brush technique. And I think the sky is dry enough, just dry enough now that I can go back in with more of my dark green color finish off these trees and again this is fairly wet wash but I'm using the tip of my brush lightly and carefully to put in some more trees. They look a little bit more blue than green so I'll get a little bit more green here. These are pines. This is a great technique for pine trees. Again light touch on the brush that gives me, allows me to make some marks but gives me some of that rough texture especially on the edges of where there might be branches. Great, so we've used the wet brush, dry brush technique in several places, the sky, the surface of the water to get our reflections in. And one last thing we can do now is our lift technique. And we, we can do that by running some essentially ripples through the water. As, and we want to do that right where the reflections are. So again, my flat brush clean, cleaned with clear water, blotted really well so it's a very dry brush. and it'll lift out some lighter areas. I want to make sure these are horizontal. Very light areas, which again may show that there's ripples in the water interrupting those reflections. The wetter the wash, the, the uh, more you're going to lift paint off. So for instance, this lifted a lot more paint than those. This area is still wet actually much wetter than those areas back there. And then the last thing I think to do would be a little bit more of our dry brush, and this is truly dry brush, very thick paint, a mixture of ultramarine and burnt sienna together on a very dry brush. And I'll finish off the trunks of these trees. I'll bring them down. They're far away from us so we don't see them clearly, but we're able to show these vertical trunks of trees. 
The dry brush gives us a little hint of texture and again maybe some light highlights that are happening because of the way the light is hitting those trees or the trunks of the trees and gives us a little bit more information about the trees themselves. So in this little scene we used the dry brush, I should say the wet brush, dry brush technique with a really wet wash in the brush but using its side or its tip very lightly. We used that same technique to get some indications of the reflections of the trees and the water over here. And we used our lift technique with our flat brush to lift some ripples out of the area where the reflections are showing in the water. And it gave us this really great little scene with clouds in the sky, some reflectiveness and shimmering on the water itself, nice reflections in the water of the trees back here on the little piece of land. And then finally we used our small round with a really dry brush technique, so uh, truly dry brush. A lot of paint, very little water in the brush to create little indications of the trunks of those pine trees. So there it is, the dry brush and lift techniques. That's how they can be used to get really great effects in your landscape paintings. Works in still life paintings and really floral paintings as well. But these are how they can be used to create those uh, little highlights with lifts, a lot of texture with the dry brush, and even the wet brush dry brush technique. So practice them, get really used to how they work get good at handling them, and then start adding them into your paintings. It's going to add a lot of character, a lot of really good expressive information in your paintings.